Alright, hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play Starflight 2. I'm the Mysterious JG. Uh, soon I will stop introducing videos by saying if I cut off suddenly without warning, don't panic. But I can't do that this time. Uh, last time we were right in the middle of a conversation with the Dweena one I had to cut out. And in fact, uh, you have to really rush to read what question they were asking. Because uh, I am going to have to actually go back and load. They, they asked me a question I didn't answer. And... Uh, the question itself is shoved off the screen by their follow-up <laughs> when they really want an answer. So, I believe what they asked me was, uh, you can be honest with this, but you really hate talking to us, don't you? So let's uh, pick this back up with our friends, in quotes, the Dweenal. The Dweenal are annoying because they're always criticizing their own use of save states during their LPs. Makes it difficult to watch them. You just want them to shut up and get on with it. Give me the game in progress. And to be honest, I bet you find us just a little depressing to talk to. Of course, you hate us like everyone else. But if hypothetically thinking you were offering to, you were offered to charge, to chance to prove you like us, would you do it? If you didn't like us, I mean, which of course you don't. But if you did, uh, yes. This is different from what they said before. offered a chance to prove that we like them, would we accept it? Yeah, we would. We want to make friends with these guys. So that's, um, it doesn't matter. Nothing matters. I'm leaving. Okay. <laughs> I'm not really sure what we were supposed to say there, but uh, we're being scanned. That uh, whole conversation just kind of fell apart on me a little bit. They asked you whether you like them, and before I had a chance to answer, they asked me, would you be willing to prove it? And I thought I said yes. Maybe I misread the question. But it doesn't seem like uh, we got a chance to prove that we liked them. Anyway. So this will be a Dweenal planet. Uh, small pallid biped race. They do so okay, they sell god masks here. Excellent. So let's uh And of course they have an icy homeworld because they're depressing. It only makes sense. I'm sure that there are very cheerful and upbeat people from countries like, you know, the Scandinavian countries, and um, there are cheerful people who live in the Yukon, and there are cheerful Eskimos, but we tend to think of those countries as being places where people are somewhat somber. The TV life form shield is active. Ah, there's a trading post right over there. Oh, and there's minerals, too. We're not going to bother with minerals in this game very much. But it's nice that this is a trading post. Do you want to trade? Yes. We are the Duino. We know our prices are much too high. If you want to go and trade with someone else, we'll understand. Can I sell them anything? No, I don't have anything they want. But we want to buy God Masks, which they're selling for 78% of their value. So they're starting out quite, quite reasonable. 780, take it or leave it. Counter... <laughs> So you have this kind of Tandiluvian god mask, you've got this mask with a single eyeball on it, and you've got an Elvis god mask. Excellent. Uh, let's start out with 300. I'm afraid I can't hear you. I trade that for myself, for my race, blah, blah, blah. Let's try 450. And he brings it down just barely. You're not going to be able to move them too much. 550. Brings it down to 691. Ooh, that's 69 percent. That's too sexy to refuse. Not to mention the fact we should be able to get a lot more than 69 percent of their value from the uh, Tandaloo. So we will once again buy all that we can. 126.2 God masks. I'm not sure what the point two God masks will consist of, but uh, oh well. And that was quite handy. Our ship was very close to their trading post, so good stuff. Now eventually we'll have to revisit the Dweenal for plot reasons, uh, as the Humna Humna pointed out, they're the oldest race in the sector. And you'll notice that we have a whole uh, line of queries about the past, because finding out about the past of this region of space is going to be important to actually winning our plot mission, which as you will recall is to determine what the Spemin source of technology is and um, where the sh uh, Shinium source is. 
because you know once again the fuel supply is integral to the main plot although this time you know that right from the beginning and it's not a twist when we find out the truth about the fuel source will it be a twist I don't remember honestly but um, definitely we can expect there to be some uh, twists and turns along the way of some kind probably maybe perhaps and more to win. joy now that it makes the slightest bit of difference, but this is Commander Skublawa of the Dwindle ship Skublawa. I don't even know what we're doing out here. If you don't want to respond, go ahead. If you don't, it's not going to kill us. Hello, we come in peace from the planet Earth. I bet you would never in a million years take on a Dwindle as a crew member on your ship, since you despise us so much. I certainly don't blame you. I hate having us on our ship. If you had the chance, you wouldn't, would you? Probably not. Oh, it's a negative. You wouldn't, would you? Uh, if you had the chance, you wouldn't. No, we would. Or did I just decline a Dwindle crew member? I'm not sure. I think I just declined a Dwindle crew member. I meant to actually accept taking one on. Okay, so the next time they ask that, I have to say yes, even though they said you wouldn't. Trade? Why should you care about trade? Everyone is just out to cheat you anyway. And now that Shinium is becoming scarce, the whole economy is going to collapse just as well, I suppose. You gotta have more than that. Oh, we could have gotten a Dwindle crew member for what good that does us. The Humna Humna like to cheat us on a regular basis by selling us worthless, brightly colored amuso balls. They've been doing this for generations, and every Dwindle has rooms filled with them. Some people might say we are really stupid. I guess that's no great surprise. This may come as quite a surprise, but we Dwindle are not very good at trading. In fact, we enjoy trading just about as much as I'm enjoying this conversation with you. <laughs> the only thing we seem to know much about is the distant past, not that we care much about that, that than anything else. Well, let's ask them about the past. We weren't always as cheerful as we are now. In the past, we Dweedle used to become very morose and depressed. <laughs> we are a very old race, and I guess we know a lot about the distant past, but what difference does it make? What difference does any of it make? Why should we tell anybody anything? It's too much trouble. Besides, we know you hate us. You need to get them to tell you about the past. But it's going to take more than just asking. You probably won't us to tell you all about the ancient Legic since we used to know them. Well, why don't you go to Eltesh and ask the Loar there who studied them? Oh, right. I forgot. They're all dead. <laughs> okay, so we know there's a species called the Loar and the Legic. Well, I guess we'll go now. Don't worry about us. We'll get along somehow, and so what if we don't? Who cares? All right, so if they ask me that yes-no question about trading for crew members, next time I would have to say uh, yes. Because in this game, you can actually get alien crew members. You have to give up a member of your crew to get them. And uh, honestly, I think I'd give up Dr. Anastasia, because as much fun as it is to have uh, Rumble Rose's character in our crew, she's liable to get killed the first time we land on a planet where there's an electrical storm or something. Anyway... Skirting a little close to the cloud. Are there any planets I want to check out on my way back? Um, well, I could. I'm not sure if we checked out the planet at uh, 52105. I don't even remember. But there's probably no reason not to, so let's swing by there. Um, matter of fact, I should. Uh, I should hit some of these planets to see if they've got uh, habitable worlds, but. 158. I was going to wait and make a concerted effort to scan for those planets once we had the system scanner, but I mean, as you've seen, you make money at trade faster than you make money uh, recommending colony worlds in this game. They really uh, jip you on the colony worlds in this game. The gas giant, I'm not even going to bother. Ice worlds, is, there's a, a chance. Blue worlds are your best chance, though. Uh, no water. So, no. 
the uh, atmosphere looked good, but there's no water. So. Yeah, this is looking better. Um, very thin atmosphere. Sub no, I think I actually think this is probably habitable. It's icy, uh, frozen surface, but there are some temperate spots. I would imagine this would be a non-optimal, but still livable. So let's call it Mount Gagazet or Planet Gagazet because it's all cold and stuff, and it's being named apparently by Seymour. Sacred planet Gagazet, full of giant warrior Muppets. Let me go back and find out that, oh, you forgot to check for the fact that it's got super death animals that'll kill everyone. I don't think that uh, counts in the, the process. And uh, this one doesn't have oxygen, but it does have helium, so it would be a pretty awesome planet for... Uh, Hello, we live on the helium planet. This planet has been named Jinsai. <laughs> planet Jinsai. I'll have to remember to name a planet Jinsai if we find one that has oxygen and is therefore habitable, but also has helium. <laughs> I thought uh, I thought it was 49, 149 or something. Uh, no, no, keep going. I hadn't said this, but as Bobo pointed out in the last video in his comment, I, I, it had occurred to me that this is actually pretty much is Uncharted Stars' uh, New Horizons of Space. Particularly now that Jinx Eye has come up. Sure, Fall in the meantime is playing as um, Catalina the Pirate Chick uh, in a, an LP that has a sort of different flavor. Um, less exploring, more combat. He longs for combat. I'm going to see some of both before this LP is over. You really can't avoid combat in this game. There will come a point. We, we ran away like in a panic from those aliens in the nebula, and there was another species, a completely different alien species, that shot pew pews on us on sight. Um, as memory serves, neither of them can be fully ignored. I'm going to have to go back and deal with these guys in one manner or another before it's all over. Actually, you probably could get away with ignoring at least one of those two pew pew species, but um, I mean, if you sit down, this is one of those games, like the last one, if, if you have victory steps, if you just get a text document that shows you exactly what planets to go to, what artifacts to collect, uh, and you don't go through the process of obtaining clues. Um, not that many things you really need to do, but it's a huge universe. You'd have no idea where you need to go and what you need to do without doing a lot of plot stuff, which is not directly necessary to win the game. You don't need to talk to the Thrin to win Starflight, but they are the ones who tell you where such and such artifact is. You know what I mean? So there's... Uh, somebody has detected... I don't know whether that's close enough into the center of that cloud for us to encounter the uh, the happy cloud men. Who uh, that's just what I'm going to call them for right now. We don't know anything about what they physically are, but um, the happy cloud men are a species of guys who live in the cloud. And like the happy cloud men of Starcraft, um, they're good at killing. <laughs> so I'm not going to even bother to look at gas giants, but uh, it's just not in our price range. For planets to live on 54104. Yeah, I was. I guess it was worth uh, the trouble to stop and take a peek at some of those star systems because we did find a habitable world. Uh, Mount uh, Planet Gagazet. And these brown worlds are predominantly predominantly, predominantly rock surface. I guess. I guess it's the surface is what determines what color these planets are. And the predominantly rock surface ones are brown. So they also know atmosphere, so this one's no good. Yeah, so brown and blue are actually your best bets for... Because blue means it's predominantly a water surface. Brown means it's predominantly rock. White means ice. And purple means gas, if memory serves. And I might be completely wrong. Again, I see nitrogen oxygen. I always get excited for a second, but uh, chlorine compounds... 
not really going to make for a good um, hydrosphere. You really wouldn't want to live on a planet with uh, no water but lots of liquid chlorine. Oh, that's right, this planet's inhabited. I remember now that there was uh, an inhabited system around here somewhere. Okay, uh... Yeah, we did see these guys before. They will buy singing beetles. Um, but I forget who it is. I think the TLV sell singing beetles. They, these guys are probably involved in a trade route at some point. If we could figure out who buys screech harps, there's probably like a, a trade route you can put together where you're you're selling uh, a good and buying a new good at the same stop and quite useful, but haven't actually pieced it together yet. We don't know who buys singing beetles, which means that we don't really give a crap about them for anything except selling, potentially selling screech harps, and since the guys that we buy screech harps from also sell uh, live long, right now we're not interested in dumping money on anything but them except live long. 3573. Oh, wait, I don't actually want to go back to uh, to my world right now. I want to go to um, visit the Tantalu. I don't think there's anything useful there. I'm sure that we visited this system. We visited most of the really nearby ones looking for planets that we could colonize. So which of these worlds here has Tantalu on it? I'll probably sell some of our god masks to each. Uh... 2875 would be one set of them. Twenty-nine seventy-four, to be precise. These guys talked about their son brothers, the Loar. The Legek, I think, are new on the table. Ah, yes, mysterious signs and ambiguous portents of the mysterious Cheji. Nothing can you can do or say will turn us away from our guy and the wisdom of the Dark Brug. Ah. When it comes to being happy, we are. I think you're supposed to be obsequious with these guys, I don't remember. Take our advice, shun and despise the Ashvara. They twist the truth with their malevolent perversion and will attempt to sell you their false religion. Did they finish telling us about the past? What were we even asking them about? We tend to know little of the very distant past, since Providence brought us to this most holy of sub-sectors only mere millennia ago. Why, we do know, though, through our divine mystical auguries, and also by being told <laughs> that there once lived here a widespread advanced culture called the Legic, and that the Loar studied them in detail. Exactly 16, blah, 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 blah. I think they already told us this. Tell us about other beings. No, they just tell you about the spam, and I think we're just about at the... Hoping to learn from us the true way. Yes, we recommend not into... Oh, the Humna Humna. This is new, I think. The Humna Humna are another race who seek to be disciples of the Dark Brug. Uh, under the auspices of trade, they come to us. Hope to learn from us the true way. Yes, we recommend not antagonizing them. Yes. Yeah, memory serves. The Humna, Humna, the Humna Humna can actually defend themselves if you get in a fight. Beware the, the Ganak, our coward neighbors who know nothing of the Dark Bryog. Ah, their home planet and 15930 is an uninviting place. Well, yes, they class us as Ganun in their particular hierarchy, their peculiar hierarchy, and are less than respectful, most disturbing, yes. Okay, I think the, the Ganak are probably one of the species that has been shooting, shooting pew pews at us, but now we know where their home system is. Within the cloud dwell you, man, you, yes, the Tantalu are not intimidated by them, hostile as they may be. Yeah, but they've told us about this. Perhaps at another time. In the meantime, get lost. Well, if I had to guess, they said that the Ganuk are hostile and the Umanyu are hostile. We've encountered two different pew pew shooting species, so that's probably probably then. It's probably the Ganuk and the Umanyu. So the Umanyu are in the cloud. The Ganuk are those guys that we encountered just kind of in the universe at large who started shooting pew pews at us. From what I've... From what we've been told, it sounds like the, the Umanyu are probably 
very dangerous. The Gnuck, they said, are hostile, but I don't know. I mean, we could always attempt to, to win a firefight with uh, either group. Generally, you don't want to just go in guns blazing in this game unless you know what you're doing. I mean, you know, how are you going to get information on the Gnuck by killing them? Doesn't seem to me like that approach makes sense, but... Okay, good. A trade center. It's, uh, it's nice in this game. Once you once you get the whole trading thing down and it stops being new and exciting to you, it, it becomes really annoying if you can't find a trade outpost as soon as you land. Welcome, disciples. Mm, yes, whatever. So they start out... We start out already with a profit on these, selling them, but not a huge one. And these guys sell... System scanner. Okay, so we do want that. Want. I already am flustered by your calm and clever manner. Am I distracted state? I forget to attempt barter and begin with my highest offer of 835. We're going to counter with like 2,000. We'll never get anywhere near that, but... Seventeen fifty counter with fifteen hundred twelve forty seven. Let's go with thirteen fifty twelve ninety eight. That's fine. We got these things for like sixty nine percent of their value. We're selling them for one hundred and thirty. So. Yeah, we had a 50% of, of the core value of these things is profit to us. That's pretty good. Thank you for selling us that. It is something we value most highly. We are in your debt. Sell all? No. Let's leave about 15 so we can sell 10 to the Eshvara. Or the Eshvi. Yeah, the Eshvara. Because we are selling to the Eshvi. So we'll sell 100 and 111.2. Oh, that's not going to give us enough for the system scanner, though. Although we have to barter down the price of the system scanner. No, we we need we need to get that thing down to about half. We don't have enough money for the system scanner. Damn it! Hmm. Oh wait. Blah, 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 blah. Forget it. We have 145. It costs. 20, oh, it costs 30. I, I was thinking it costs like 298, 240, two, yeah, I, I was I was adding a digit to this thing. We can afford this just fine. Ah, oh, yes, the system scanner F6. I can see that you are a trader of distinction. Let us say, so I could afford to buy it for its current cost, but we might as well try to barter it down. No reason not to, you know, at least attempt it. He bows his head in shame. He's just shaving off tiny little increments here. I don't think we're going to get this much lower, but... Good enough. Excellent! Oh, wait. Well, these guys don't buy Tandaluvian Happy Juice or sell that anyway, do they? That's the uh, Eshvara, I think. Alright, so yeah, what we'll do is we'll go we'll go visit the Eshvara. And, um... If they have Tandaluvian Happy Juice, we'll buy that and head over to the TLV and make another, uh, make another run the border. Make another run for the um, home to home now. And at this rate, if we don't just uh, if we don't just bleed this trade route dry, and um, so that the components that we need to move along this trade route are no longer available to us, it sounds like uh, we've just one trade route. If we we can beat this to death and come up with enough to get all of our class five stuff, and then uh, from that point on, trade is just. Uh, the only purpose of further trade is to keep ourselves in Shinium uh, fuel. So we'll just... Uh... Well, I guess there are useful artifacts to be found, but... Uh... Oh, you did not mean to do that. But 
probably oh I was going to say by tracing my steps back I was able to quickly get back to where I meant to be but no that was not actually in fact the case no <laughs> that's not good at least there wasn't an Umanu ship waiting for us this time This isn't this isn't the right place, that's for sure. I have to be more careful about jumping into that uh Wow, this really isn't where I meant to go. However, This is not where I meant to go, but this seems like it's pretty close to uh, Benthblunk. Oh, but we don't have the coordinates on Benthblunk to search. Now, I got into my mind that we would, uh, maybe we'll go ahead and try to get the plot moving with the Benthblunk thing, but no, this isn't the, we can't do that yet because we'd, we would just search the planet and not even know where to go at this point. So I've got some other little cluster of these uh, fluxes that I'm stuck in. Oh, good grief. Pop me off into the middle of the freaking cloud nebula again. Well, this is an exciting new place. If you're capable of uh, tracking these things, if you did a better job than I do of paying attention to where each of these is dropping you, you would actually... I'm certainly finding a lot of interesting potential shortcuts. That took us to this one on the top. I think we'll take us up towards cluster in the nebula. And now once we're in the nebula, we need to figure out how to get back to that cluster that was not north of, but upspin from the nebula. Which I think we just did. Oh, and you'll notice on the map, weird, sparkly. Yeah, you don't want to go. You don't want to mess with that until you know what it is, really. Okay, who are you guys, and are you going to kill me? I don't know who they are, but they they do want to kill me. And from the just how rapidly they were firing, I think. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure who that was. You know what? Screw it. This is close enough. Let's use the system scanner. Or try to. The system scanner is marked F6 because that's the button you use to you activate to use it. So on my keyboard, F6 is... <sighs> Control F6. Shift F6. Shift F6 is like selecting stuff. Function F6. It's, it's, a, it's not an a, a issue with the game being funky. It's an issue with my keyboard. And what do I actually have to do? Scanning. Function F6. Planet one is, mol is molten. Planet two is molten. Planet three is molten. Planet four is gas. Planet five is liquid. 
minus 6 is liquid and has life. So it doesn't look like it actually tells you whether the thing is uh, habitable, but it's got a biodensity of 30, and it's unlikely to me that there's a planet that can support life that doesn't already have some biodensity. So we could always just take a second to look closer at planets that have already have some biodensity. Nitrogen, oxygen, water, Arctic to tropical. This planet would appear to be fantastic. Cool, so, um, what do we want to call this planet? Um, hmm, what do we want to call this planet? We'll name this planet, uh, well, I've been using Final Fantasy X names, but, uh, Fluxes are for fluxing. No. Because <laughs> Fluxes managed to get us here. I'll just call it Spira. Not very creative. But I don't want to spend a lot of time trying to think about it at this point. So there we see how the, um, the system scanner can be useful. I just um, scanned and noticed a planet that had biodensity. I'm not imagining we're going to find that here. Biodensity zero. Biodensity zero. So, I mean, while we're here, I feel like we could just check out this whole cluster of stars, but... Is there a point in using it in a place that only has one planet? Probably not. Now that we've got this thing, we could come back. We could always come back later and, and do this, but um, molten planet, liquid planet, gas, frozen planet. No life here. So this, as you can see, uh, that was worth a couple of bucks. It means that we can uh, check any of these worlds. One hundred three seventy-seven. I don't know if we already did this one. We can check these worlds, uh, these systems quite quickly, and the ones that are just completely devoid of any interest to us, we can move along quickly. Gas and frozen. Basically, if it doesn't have uh, biodensity, we don't care. video was a little short, so we can probably survive having one be a little long. Biodensity of 82, and a biodensity of 0. So that molten planet actually has some life. Is this going to turn out to be the planet with the uh, flying plants that eat you? I think it is, actually. I think we've been here. So we've been here before, and these guys uh, attack on site. I think I decided that I wanted to come back and see what happens if you fight back, but 
I mean, we're peaceful dudes. We don't really want to go pick a fight with a gun. Just land on their planet and start killing them. Just because they're kind of jerks and deserve it. It, it. At least at this moment, they don't have the capacity to come pick on us, so we probably shouldn't pick on them. And we'll go right back into this nightmare of fluxes, although I, I was... Uh-oh. I do not like spawning right in the middle of a crowd. Especially a crowd that fires pew-pews at us. And they fire red and purple pew-pews. Where are we exactly? Yeah, that's going to be the... That's 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 probably the Umanu. They're close enough to us. Uh, the cloud that is probably the Umanu at the outer... And you know what? This is close enough. I'm not going to try to figure out which of those will get me back. I'm just going to head for... Um, I think it's uh, 3471. I'm just going to go there the old-fashioned way. doesn't take that much fuel or time and I really don't want to just keep jumping around randomly. Although we did come out of that whole mess, hot mess with a uh, we actually have to 3573, we have to go uh, get credit for that planet. We've got two planets actually. Uh, planet Gagazet and uh, Spira that we've uh, recommended so we should have a decent chunk of change. Spira should be an optimal planet from what I can tell. Gravity was uh, a little high, 1.4 or whatever, but the temperatures and stuff were, were good. So I might have come out of all this with a couple of bucks. Planet Gagazette. The planet proved to be suitable for colonization. You have earned a bonus of 30,000 shinium pennies. A value of the planet proved to be suitable for colonization. You have earned a bonus of 40,000 shinium pennies for Spira. Listen, Borno, don't do anything I might regret. I'll tell you what, if you'll return my high-performance strontium tongs and my multi-phase double-tiered plasma percolator, I'll give you back your money. Fair is fair. Okay. So... How much could we sell this uh, artifact scanner for? A lot less than we paid for it. And all we can buy is a bunch of minerals. So forget that. 191, 259. Oh, we almost have enough for the best possible missile launcher. And uh, I have found that when I do combat in this game, I tend to stay far away and use missiles as opposed to lasers. Uh, but whatever. Uh, it's really time to end the video, but I think I'll click the head over for the Tandalu Eshvara and um, see if they have uh, Tandaluvian uh, happy juice. Because uh, that may influence what we, what we do in the next video. If we can't get our hands on Tandaluvian happy juice, I, I might decide to do some I might decide to go searching for habitable planets now that we've got the system scanner rather than um, doing that trade route again because the longer we put off repeating that trade route really the better because it improves the chances that uh, I know we've already scanned I searched this place I'm sure but the longer we put that off then the better chance that when we go do it again there'll be plenty of uh, the resources that we're actually trading in. Uh, to make some money. I think this is the uh, Eshvi or Eshvara, whichever one. I can never remember which is which. And something that kind of happens on its own after a while, that when I was off-screening this, allowed me to figure out some stuff. Hasn't happened yet. I uh, really don't feel like talking to you guys. Sorry. I don't think they've got a whole lot left to say that's going to be useful to me. So let's just uh, quick land and see if we can get some happy juice, and that will basically tell you what the next video is going to be about exploration or a trade run to places we've already been. Okay. 
see a trading uh, place, but there is some kind of settlements up this way. Lightning balloons. Chasing us down. Like I said, once you uh, have, once you're no longer awed by the awesome graphics and the, the concept of exploring a strange alien world, you just get irritated if you can't find a trade uh, outpost as soon as you land. <laughs> There's one. We are the dudes. What? Is this where we went? Okay, never mind. Oh, it looks like we've already negotiated a price with these guys. Either that or they start out at well over 100. Okay, good. I figured it. We should have a we should have an opportunity to negotiate a different price with the Eshvara. Decided on five, so I could keep ten for emergencies, and then we will buy all the ten Diluvian happy juice we can. What is this guy? We just got done selling you your favorite stuff. You're not even gonna negotiate with us a little bit. 800750 it amounts to the same thing. I'll accept the one-time special price of 1158. I need to get this stuff down a little bit or I'm not really making any profit off of it. 900 1024 950 You drive a hard bargain. All right. So Keeping in mind that we bought this for 95%, we need to sell it for, yeah, and we're buying all that they've got of it. So we need to sell this for more than 95% of what it's worth, or we're basically getting hosed. We're not making any money, we're just burning shinium. Alright, so I'm going to get back to the ship, and then we're going to end the video. And this would be kind of a long one, but we had a slightly short one last time out, so whatever. Eventful video, we sold some god masks. We sold uh, goods to both parties, both ends of a civil war, although I don't think they're throwing god masks at each other as a weapon, so whatever. And we've said, uh, we just basically affirmed up the next video will be a trade video. Excitement. Alright folks, that's going to be it for this video. When we come back, uh, next time uh, we'll probably make enough money in our trade route to buy class 5 weapons. But there's both laser cannons and missile launchers to be bought, so we won't be fully tooled up for another couple of videos, but uh, we're getting pretty close, folks, thanks to the trade routes of not being quite inside the Cloud Nebula. It's Mysterious JG. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.